Okay. Hi, everyone, and uh, a really good morning for everybody who had joined us for today's session on building your own chat with GPT-4. Uh, we have our speaker who is going to help us understand the topic, Arindam Sarkar, who is a, a senior ML engineer, and he's going to walk us through the topic and help us better understand and how we can build it on our own. And uh, before we get into the session that I want to share that the session is going to be recorded and available in our YouTube channel. Secondly, there is a certificate of participation to those who stay till the end. So at the end of the session, I will share a form which you can fill out and uh, basically get it in your inbox. And uh, that's pretty much it for the introduction and uh, all stages for editing them to get started with. Over to you. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> sure. Uh, thanks, Suresh. Uh, so, hi everyone. <clears throat> as uh, Suresh introduced me, so my name is Arindam, and I am working as a senior machine learning engineer. So, I am having almost uh, four years of experience with uh, you know ML AI. And uh, today we are going to you know see that uh, you know the new wave or let's say the new buzzword Chat GPT, like let's say how it works and how you can make it work with your own data. Uh, so, you know, what I am thinking that we are going to divide this session into mainly two parts. OK, in the first part, what I'll do, I'll just give you a brief about, you know, that uh, what are the main uh, parts of chat GPT, right? Uh, how it works and then uh, uh, another session will be will be a coding walkthrough where I'll show you that how you can, you know, go to Google Colab and, you know, just the way I am working it out here, if you can just work it out uh, the way I am working, then you will see that uh, you will be you will you will also be able to replicate that result. Uh, so without any further ado, so let's get uh, let's get started and uh, I'll just, you know, switch up my camera to, you know, save some bandwidth so that there is no lag uh, while I'm talking. Um, so let me share my screen. Uh, I don't have prepared any uh, PPT or uh, anything uh, because this will be a very, very, you know, technical dis discussion and I will walk you through every step in a normal, you know, text file or let's uh, text editor file. And I'll say you what are the steps that we are going to do and why it is needed that uh, why chat GPT, let's say if you just go to chat GPT in google.com, why it is not able to answer anything Let's say, let's say you have given an exam, right? So it is a document, right? If you ask any question regarding that exam, why it is not able to answer it? So we will see all these, uh, uh, what I'll say, all the scenarios, why it is not and how we can make it work, why it is not able to answer. Uh, so let me just share my screen here. Yeah. Uh, are you are you guys able to see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Sure. So let's get started here.
hi everyone uh i think there is some technical issue with the teams because he is um been removed from session i have pinged him and see if you know uh he is able to respond i hope i am audible um uh let's give him a few minutes to come back and uh, we will resume where we left off hey hi everyone uh, sorry actually uh, my internet got dropped for a couple of minutes uh let me just reshare my screen quickly without any further ado so what i was saying that uh, you know we want to first walk through that how chat gpt works right so if you look at chat gpt right so chat gpt has two components mainly one which is called as the retaining step and number two which is you know fine tuning step now in the retaining steps if you heard about let's say when we say that llm right llm like uh, gpt4 or gpt uh, 3.5 right so these are all llms right so in the first step what we do basically uh, we train this gpt model and i'll talk a little bit about how we train them and in the fine tuning step what do we do we take a lot of you know question answer pair uh, question answer answer pair and we find you so for step 1 basically we need for step 1 we use a new nn architecture uh, nn which is called as transformer if you guys are familiar with uh, basically for open ai we use transformer decoder right now this step is very very resource intensive right very very resource intensive like for a normal people it is quite impossible to do uh, like let's say like for a company like uh, google meta or open ai it takes several months to train this step uh but the training process is very very simple to be very honest uh the training process is let's say you have the whole internet of data basically text data uh you can think that wikipedia right so wikipedia has a lot of information so you scrape all the data from web and then what you do you you know fulfill a very very simple objective which is you know predict the next predict the next word this is the objective of training right uh, objective of training what i'll say objective of training so let me give you one example right let's say if i say today i am taking a if i ask any of you right so to fill in this blank so you might someone might say today i am taking a session today i am doing some other thing right uh, so basically this is how you are going to train the neural network model or the transformer model like let's say gpt4 or gpt3.5 llama whatever is available there so this is the main task of llm so while find you know while training this model it gets better and better and you know for this we need a very very resource intensive like let's say few a100 gpus if you have heard of you know nvidia gpus uh which is you know quite impossible for to uh, you know quite impossible for a you know let's say if you are just uh, starting out it's not possible to do that kind of training right now uh so uh this is the simple objective uh and in this step uh this step we don't touch actually this is something which is you know let's say this models get released by this big companies google meta 
and what generally people try to do they try to get involved in this fine tuning stage right this fine tuning stage where if you need to collect a lot of you know question answer pair and fine tune the model so you can think of let's say you are reading let's say a mathematics book right or let's say if you are reading some uh, chemistry physics book what you can do you can you have always let's a lot of question there you and you have some answer so you can fit those question answer uh, you know in certain way to this gpt model and it will be able to you know go through those question answer and in the future uh, you know in the in in future whenever you are going to ask some question about that it will be able to answer and for that what happens is generally in generally uh, it is also resource intensive to be very honest why because fine tuning means let's say uh, in gpt gpt there is 170 billion parameters uh, gpt is having 170 billion parameters so so you can think of 170 billion parameters means so for each parameter you will have a four byte let's say if you just go with a four byte presentation so 170 billion into 4 if you do that it will be you know couple of 100 gbs right even i am i might be wrong with the mathematics but even more than that right so even it is very hard to even store in a single computer uh, this this amount of you know uh, uh, resource so that's why you know it generally this all the other steps that i have just shown you it got uh, generally trained on a very high cluster gpus or super computers to be very honest uh, now these are the things which we don't care about to be very honest uh, with respect to as a developer point of view uh, whatever i have said just now so what we care about let's say i have a i have a piece of information how can i ask question on top of it right uh so for this what we do basically for this we use a technique called rag rag means retrieval augmented generation now let me just walk you through how rag works okay so before going into this let me just show you one simple uh, you know example which we are going to take today right so let's say if i go to chat gpt and ask a simple question let's say what is a model what is gemini model from google so you see right how it is responding that it doesn't know about the gemini model because uh, chat gpt is only trained with the data before january 2022 so it is it 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 is having no knowledge about the data uh, which is after 2022 january but let's say if i do a google search if you see right so this is the this is a recent paper from google i think which is released last month uh, it is also a llm uh, it's called gemini so just wait for couple of minutes or maybe couple of seconds yeah so i think it's a very long paper it is having 62 pages of you know uh, documentation and there is lot of technicalities that is you know available here but we we don't care about it you can think think it uh, you know as a information right so what i am trying to say here is that so your chat gpt sometimes sometime may fail because it is not having the knowledge after 2022 jan right but how can you make it work with the data that is available to you so 
the first step that I have just described to you as fine tuning, right? But I said that that is a very resource intensive the work. So it is not possible for us to do a fine tuning on our own computer or with the available resources that we have. It's a very expensive game to be very honest. But there is a way out uh, that we can take. What is the way out? That way out is very, very simple. So you have a piece of information, right? Uh, let's say if you if you have a piece of information in PDA, text, or any piece of information. So what you can do, you can store that in a database. Let me just tell it as a database, right? So if you can store that information in a database and let's say you ask a query and that query goes to this database and and if this is able to this is able to give you the most relevant information we will see this all in action okay so don't worry I am just, you know, uh, telling few technical details. We'll see everything in code just afterwards. Uh, able to give the most relevant information. And if we can fit that to LLM, then LLM will be able to organize and give you the final answer, right? So this is a very, very simple, you know, methodology. You can think of, let's say you go to Google, you search for something, right? And Google retrieves some information. And let's say if you fed uh, here, let's say when I, uh, uh, just to show you that example where I was showing you, let's say now I have gone to this google.com and I have find this paper. Now let's say if I just, you know, copy paste this information to chat GPT, suddenly you will see that chat GPT will be able to answer some of the questions out of you know uh, uh, some of the questions uh, out of this right if i now say that what is gemini model it will be able to you know give you some answer uh, if you see right it was uh, lastly saying that it uh, it is having no information but right now if you see right it is having saying that it is a paper from Google research because I have just given it a very little bit of information copying from just first couple of lines, right? So that's the that's the basic, basic, very basic way of saying it. So you have a information, you just retrieve it from somewhere uh, and we know that where we store data, right? We store data in database. So you get that data from database, you fed it to LLM and in the end your LLM will be able to, you know, give you the final answer uh, in a more compact and nice presentable way in your chatbot. Uh, so I have done a very, very rough sketch of this, but uh, this is the way. Uh, and you know, in the database, in, in case of LLM, the database is not a normal database. Let's say uh, we use we usually use right this MongoDB, MySQL, or all these things, right? But here it will be a vector database. The database will be a vector database. Now, one question is how are we going to store the data? So you have let's say lots of text so there is one way uh, so you can ask me that hey arinam why we need a vector database right we can store the normal text in a normal db right uh, uh, this is just a normal text file we can store it anywhere but there is a difference right uh, what i have asked you that we want to if you just uh, you know focus on this part able to give you the most relevant information uh, so there is a technique which is called semantic search, right? So what is semantic search? I'll show you. We do it. We do it using embeddings. What we call is that oh, word embeddings. So don't worry. I'll just go to code and I'll show you every step that I'm talking about here. Uh, I'm just giving you the, you know, what we are going to learn today. Uh, and then uh, then what 
semantic search so let's say if you ask any question then there is a method called semantic search and using that semantic search technique you will be able to get the most relevant information from your vector db and once you have that information what you can do you can just you know uh, get those information and fed it to your llm or gpt4 model so i think enough of talking let's go to code okay uh, and we'll be able to you know get everything as much as possible there um, so there will be couple of things that i just wanted to discuss here before going to the code yeah so this is a you know collab notebook maybe i'll share this with uh, shuresh uh, or maybe in the group so that you know everyone can run it and they can also feel uh, what is going on okay with this uh, there will be two things that is needed uh, if you are if you use gpt right so you need one gpt subscription so that you can you know get the open ai uh, apis for that you can go to this open ai uh, site open ai uh, let's say if you go and if you if you can you know buy one or purchase one subscription from here and once you do that you will be able to see you will be able to get something like a something like this file so this is a file where you will open ai will give you one open ai key right and you will also able to get what is the open ai engine engine and what is the open ai api type what is the open ai api base so these are the all information once you purchase that particular api uh, uh you can just try it out i think it also gives you some amount of free credit uh so if you are just you know you want to check that how it performs or at least for this exercise you can you know just subscribe and check and then maybe you can cancel it out so we are going to you know just uh, 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 upload this kind of a file which we call as a environment file right so we are going to upload that particular file to here we are also going to upload this uh, if you have seen this right this google gemini paper which chat gpt was not able to answer so i i am just going to show you the same example how we can work it out and i have given you a very very rip rap idea and now we are going to concretize that idea uh, let me just maximize my screen yeah so these are the these are the four you know uh, dependencies i think uh, you uh, you guys are familiar with python so most of our coding will be in python because most of the capable AP, apis are available in python for at least for ai work right so these are the four or five dependencies right uh, i think OpenAI is one SDK. It is from OpenAI. Then Langchain is another SDK, which is a wrapper of OpenAI. This is the database that I was talking about. This is something which is related to PDF reading. Uh, this is related related to something like the one which I was talking as embedding. And this is also the same. Wait for one. I think it will not take much time. Just wait for a couple of seconds.
so from this particular cell, I am going to explain that whatever we are doing. Okay, uh, so these were the basic imports. Uh, so let's say whenever you give a text to chat GPT, how it process that data, right? So we are just going to replicate that particular process. Uh, so this is a particular model which is coming from uh, OpenAI only. And I was just talking about that embedding thing, right? So what is what embeddings? Uh, let me just explain you, right? So here, if you see when I am saying that it is awesome, right? So in that case, it is representing that particularly. It will be better if we do it in this way. Yeah, so I am saying it is awesome. And if you see right, each of these words are getting presented by a number, right? And you can think of, OK, how it is getting presented by this particular number, even how it is relevant, right? So this is the very, very basic of natural language processing that in natural language processing, the main concept is word embeddings. So this particular number, if you see here, this is having a very significant meaning, right? So this particular token number, let's say this it is having 270. This 270 number is going to be represented as a very, you know, as a vector number. And this vector is, you know, uh, this uh, 270, 318 and 7427. This is a vector representation of this. It is awesome. And for this, there is also a behind scenario where we are going to train the model and, you know, get these numbers. But I think that technical details is not needed. What is needed here? I'll show you a very interesting example that when I was saying that we want to get that uh, the relevant information, how we can do that using word embeddings, right? So let's say if I am saying that NLP is awesome and NLP is very good. These are two sentences, right? I uh, don't think about this. Uh, don't think about this uh, coding. I'll explain it later. But just thinking about that, that how we can measure how similar these two sentences are, because that is how we are going to check, right? That how we, whenever we are saying some query, we want to get the information which is the most relevant to that query, right? If we get some random answer out of that query, then there is no meaning. But uh, let's say that is how the word embeddings help us. Word embedding, uh, word embeddings, what it, uh, what it do? Basically. It will give you uh, a vector representation. And when you do a similar searching, right? Let's say I am saying that king and queen and let's say king and uh, apple and some orange, right? So apple and orange are related to fruit. King and queen, let's say related to some kingdom. Uh, you can read about this word embeddings in any of the you know resources and you will get a better idea. But here what I'm trying to say is that if you have two similar sentences, this cosine similarity is basically a score between zero to one. Zero meaning that they are not similar and one meaning they are highly similar. So if you see here, right, the score is coming very, very high, right? 0 0.094. It is almost near to one, right? Because these two sentences are almost similar. But let me just show you if I say that I am watching a movie which is totally uh, to not relevant to what I have written in the first sentences, right? Sorry. Yeah, you see, right? The score is coming very, very low, right? So when the sentences are similar at that time, the score was very high. When the sentence become very uh, not relevant at that, that time, the score is becoming very low. So this is how we judge that what is the portion that we want to extract from the DB based on this, you know, let's say you ask a one question, uh, one question like, hey, I want I want to know about, uh, let's say machine learning and you are having a book and how it will know that from where we want to get uh, that machine learning information. So it will go to document and it will find the most relevant part where this machine learning definition is there and it will extract it out. So I, I, I hope you got some basic idea about, you know, 
that how this uh, in a, you know embedding help us to get the final score right uh, or to search in a very big space uh, about uh, uh, the most relevant information so that being said now let's go to the open ai sdk and see that how we can work with open ai sdk I have to bring it to dot Yeah. Now, let me show you a one piece of, you know, this is something which is coming from, you know, when we see this chat GPT, right? How it works with API. This is the API version of chat GPT. Uh, and I will ask the same question, right? Uh, so there is, you know, something in this open AI chat completion or create. Uh, if you see the chat GPT UI, it is basically in the back end using this particular uh, API. Okay. Uh, now this API, it takes two, three, uh, you know, inputs from user. One is what is the engine? Basically, engine means that what is the deployment ID? You are having some deployment ID, which you need to pass it to the OpenAI kit or OpenAI SDK. Then this you can think of, you know, it is it is coming something from the OpenAI side, and there is this message portion. In this message portion, what you need to do, you need to, you know, go to here. And if you see right, uh, what it is so in this content, we are going to ask this particular query. What that? What is the Gemini model from Google? Which I asked it to Chat GPT as well, right? In front of you. So let's just you know see right how it comes uh, when we are asking this particular question. How uh, you know what is it answering? Sorry, I think I have to to do one more thing I haven't done. I have to. You have to just copy paste this thing. Right. Yes. So if you see right, the answer is coming as that Gemini model from Google is not currently recognized in the context of Google product or services, right? It is also not able to answer it, right? Then I'll show you that how we can make it work with the particular PDF. So this is the PDF I have shown you, right? This is the particular PDF where all the information about the Gemini model is present, right? So what we will do here, we will first upload that particular PDF and then we are going to chunk that PDF. That means that the way we are going to divide the PDF uh, in, you know, shorter, shorter chunks. And those shorter chunks will be our documents. So let me just do that in front of you so that you guys can also understand it. Uh, for this, what we are doing, we are using a framework called LangChain, right? So from LangChain, we are going to load these. So this Langchain framework, it is having, you know, uh, different kind of uh, text splitting criteria. So one which we are using here is that recursive character text splitter. Uh, and as I said you, right, so we are going to divide the PDF into small, small chunks and for each of the chunk, there will be some overlap factor, right? So let's say uh, how I can tell you this one. Let's say this is a particular PDF. Uh, let's say this is the ch chunk one, right? Uh, just for the example, let's say this is the chunk one. And in the next chunk, there will be some overlap. And let's say this is the next chunk. 
if you if you, this is a very roughly speaking, right? This is what uh, it is performing the chunking. Now, once you have that, we have all the texts, right? Uh, and if you see this text, let me just show you how it is coming. Uh, Second, start There is some problem. Let me just reload this file here. Yeah, it is taking some time to getting uploaded. Just wait for a couple of seconds. I think it will get uploaded. It's a big PDF file actually. I think it is having 64 or 65 pages of content. Uh -oh. Maybe my internet is slow as well. So in the meantime, if uh, anyone is having any question, they can ask me. Uh, do you have do you guys have any question uh, regarding the portion that I have gone through?
so sorry for the delay uh, but if you see right uh, now we are able to upload that particular document whatever is there in that you know it's a you, you, if you can see right it's a very very big file and uh, not very big file i'll say but it is having a lot of you know information packed on uh, anyways uh, so here if you see right uh, this is this particular text here what we are doing uh, there is a lot of chunking so let me just show you one by one right so let's go to the first one uh, what i was mentioning to you guys right that uh, uh, this is a big file Yeah, so if you see right, this is the let's say this is the first page. Uh, I was showing you one scheme, right? That where we are going to chunk the document. And let's say this is the first 1000 words, right? Uh, this is the first page. This is the next page where you have next 1000 word. So this way we are chunking the document, right? Now, let me just delete it because it is taking unnecessary space. Now what we want to do, we want to st store this data in a vector DB and you know there are a couple of options in vector DB. We can use Chroma, you can use uh, uh, one of the another option is called uh, Pies from Facebook AI. Another one is Pinecone. Uh, this Pinecone one is not for free. Chroma and Face are open source so you can use it like you know you don't have to pay any bucks for this but for if you want to use pinecone you have to pay some amount of dollars in order to get their particular database but pinecone is very much customizable uh, and you know generally enter enterprise try to use this because they have a low latency as well they have low latency as well uh, but uh from my experience chroma and phase also work pretty good uh if you have a good you know good end cpu or let's say if you have good configuration uh vm a virtual machine now what i was guys you know what i was uh, telling you in the beginning right so you have this text file we are going to you know vectorize that particular text file and then we are going to store it in the vector db we are not going to just store the text file uh, if you remember in the beginning i was showing you right that this if this is a text and then this is how the vector is coming from uh, this is how the disk, uh, vector is coming right so we are going to store that particular vector uh, not that uh, not only the raw text file then I'll show you, let's say if I ask any question like this one, how my vector DB is going to give me the documents or the answer. It will take some time to process because the file is, uh, you know, there is a lot of information in that file. Okay. It got Let me just show you what are the answer coming. So when I am saying that, tell me about the Google Gemini model. So if you see, right, it is, you know, it is just pulling out the most relevant information. So the if you, when I have shown you that particular text, which is having all the PDF text file, that was a very, very big chunk, if you remember. And here, if you see, it is just coming with a few pieces of the chunk, right? And which is the, you know, which is doing the embedding similarity the way I have shown you here, right? Let's say here, when I was trying to show you that this is a particular uh, sentence, this is a particular sentence, how much similar they are. If they are similar, then that particular chunk is going to be 
you know pulled out from the vector db uh, now this is the information that we fetched from vector db now let's do a very fun exercise now just do one thing uh, if you are familiar with you know string formatting in uh, python so what we are doing uh, we are creating one particular prompt uh, here in in our case the prompt was this is the prompt right what is the gemini model from google and we just asked it to chat gpt uh, or let's say open ai and we have seen that it is not able to answer us but the same thing what we are going to do here we are making a prompt in such a way we are going to fetch this particular information this information whatever is coming from this vector db we are going to fetch that information and then we are going to ask the same question whatever question we have asked now let's see what happens Let me just do one thing. One P print. Does P print rather than print? So that would be one that will be properly in a nice format. See? How the answer is coming now. The Gemini is a family of highly capable multimodal models developed by Google, right? So you are able to see right how it is fetching the information from your own data. And now we can ask any question from that particular document, whatever question you have. So this is the very, very basic idea. And you know, it is buzzed or you know, jargoned with so many things like rag and all this thing, but it the same idea is very, very simple. The idea is that you have a vector db, you ask a question, you get the most relevant information, you fetch it to LLM and then LLM will be able to tackle the questions that you are asking. And the advantage of this is like it is not having, you don't have to fine tune the entire model, which I was saying is a very, very, you know, research intensive work. So uh, this is one example that I have just shown you where you know um, uh, you can you are able to see on your own eyes that how we can use a particular piece of information piece of information and uh, ask question on top of that using open ai chat gpt uh, so that's it for today uh, if you guys have any question uh, please feel free to ask i think we are having 10 more minutes if you can ask any question that will be you know at least if you have any doubt or anything please ask me thank you Arindam. so there is a question in the chat box since they don't know had the mic access so someone's asking if they can have the code or the link to that uh, drive yeah, sure, sure. I'll share it to you guys. Uh, I think uh, let me just share it uh, one second. Uh, also, Venkitation is asking how to how can you import the open AI key type and base? like those kind of yeah things. yeah yeah so for that i was saying you right that you need to upload one uh, uh, environment file here so you need to create one environment file as i was showing you right so so this is one sample file so let me just share this thing too in the chat as well so you need to create this file then you need to upload it to you know here uh, 
in the Google Chrome. And also the PDF file where you want to ask your question or answer. OK, uh, let me just you know share everything in the group uh, so that you guys can. Uh, at least taste it. Uh, but what I have said, like you need the open AI subscription. That I can give you because that is coming with some cost and for every query there is a cost associated with it. Uh, right. This is the old notebook. Let me share the other things as well. OK. I can't share anything in the chat, right? Uh, yes. What Vingat is you are asking, can't we do with GPT-3 API key? Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, you can do it with GPT-3 API key as well. Uh, so you can also use uh, GPT-4. So what I am doing it here is that I am using Azure OpenAI, not exactly OpenAI. So it, uh, it is a service from Azure uh, because that is having a lot of fix uh, flexibility. OpenAI, if you use OpenAI, you will have limited amount of queries per minute or something like that. But Azure OpenAI is an enterprise version. Uh, so you can use your own API key, right? Right. And uh, I think who was asking for that uh, code. I have already shared the code. I can share the PDF file as well or the link of the PDF file. You guys can just check this out. And try it out. Uh, I'm not able to share my environment file, but this will be the format of this environment file. Yeah. If you are using Azure OpenAI, OK, if you are just using OpenAI, then you just need that. You don't need the last three. You just need that OpenAI API key just to make it clear. Any other question uh, regarding the technical details or anything? Uh, I think it will be good if you guys can try it out. I think it's very straightforward. Uh, you just if you have the OpenAI API key, just run the thing. What I have shared in this Google Chrome notebook uh, and uh, you will be able to, you know, at least get some amounts of, you know, ideas, some, some amount of idea like how it is working and will be able to get a good sense. So yeah. Listen, there is no more question that is popping up in the chat box. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, if there is anything question or any question that comes up after the session, please feel to drop it in the group if you have already joined so that we can, you know, uh, help you with that questions. Uh, I can see. OK, someone was raising their hand. But anyways, thank you everyone for joining and thank you Ed them for taking the time and sharing all the knowledge with everybody else here and um, I hope you will use the knowledge that you have gained today and uh, I hope you will try it out today or uh, and let us know if that is working for you. OK, uh, that's it for the day and I have already shared all the link that you will need after the session certificate and um, anything later and I hope you guys will be joining the community as well where uh, we'll have a lot more sessions coming up and um, yeah today tomorrow as well I think they will be joining us on the uh, chat with your data uh, on the topic we'll have it tomorrow same time if you guys want to join please be, be in the community or you can register for that session in the website OK, thank you again. Uh, thank you Edindam, for joining and uh, thank you everyone for joining with us. That's it for today and we'll see you tomorrow.
Yeah, thank you everyone. Bye.